Have you seen the new PTF recorder? Internet Explorer 11 retires on June 15th, so it's time to plan your transition strategy. Let's check out the new Chrome-based PTF recorder. Now, I've already launched PTF, and as you can see, the editor appears the same, unchanged. So let's create a new test, and then let's use the red circle to launch the recorder. Okay, so the first interesting change that I see is the false start there. It's like the recorder was going to launch and then it stopped and then it started again. So the new recorder requires the updated Chromium Selenium drivers as documented by PeopleSoft in their bring your own driver announcement. Here, let me show you. In my PTF install directory, you can see that I have the latest Chrome driver installed. Now, something that's interesting about these Chrome drivers that we've noticed is that if you have several versions, it seems as though PTF tries all of them so we just keep the latest version in our PTF install folder. Okay, so back to the recorder. Now, it clearly looks different. The Internet Explorer version was a bar across the top. It was always visible and had several PTF action buttons. This one appears as a side window with just a few buttons. It has the settings button, has a button to launch a browser, as well as a couple of buttons for interacting with the recording. So let's go ahead and press the launch browser button and the browser launches, which is interesting actually, because with the IE version, the browser would have been minimized just blinking in the taskbar. But with Chrome, we see that this new browser window leaps to the forefront, which is perfect. But I want you to notice the PTF controls don't stay on top. Now, since the PTF recorder doesn't have PTF actions in it, Maybe that's not an issue, but it's something we should keep in mind. Okay, so let's return to the recorder. As it says here, it says click on the record to start. So let's return to the recorder, press the record button. And, oh, that's cool as well. You notice that the recorder conveniently brought us back to the browser window so we could start creating our recording. And we see a nice message across the bottom there that says that we are now in recording mode. So let's record the login. Now, when generating an optimized script, we wouldn't normally record the login. The old recorder would recognize the login and disable it for us. I wanna see what the new recorder does. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my credentials. And, oh, interesting. You notice as I move between fields that the status bar across the bottom there was showing us what the PTF recorder was recording. Now. Normally, I would teach our students to click the sign in button, but I just want to see, you know, click with the mouse rather than hitting the enter key. But I want to see what is the recorder going to record. So I'm going to hit the enter key. We see that it says record button click. That's fantastic. But I want to look at the recorder. What does the recorder look like? Oh, fascinating. So it has text set value, my user ID, text set value, password, and the button click. Even though I didn't click the button, I used the enter key on my keyboard. And the PTF recorder appropriately noticed this is the login steps, so it marked them as inactive already. I like that as well. Now, I want to see both the PTF recorder and the web browser at the same time. Now, we teach our students when we're showing them PTF, we suggest that they record in full screen mode. But I can see here, because I want to see what those steps look like as I'm recording. And I can see that that would be impossible on a single monitor setup to record in full screen as well as see the steps in the recorder. So what I'm thinking is this would be perfect for a two monitor, dual monitor setup where you could take the PTF recorder, move that to a different monitor while you continue working on the recording. Now, I know that a lot of people, PeopleSoft customers, record and playback in a remote desktop session. So that's something to keep in mind as well. How are you going to enable that dual monitor setup in a remote desktop experience? Or perhaps maybe you just don't record in full screen mode anymore. Okay, so I'm looking at the list here on the left of the recorded steps, and I like what I'm seeing there. Uh, you can see it actually recorded an extra div click because I clicked over here in the web browser as I was moving the windows around. But I'm wondering, because this looks a lot like the PTF editor, and I like that I see the steps here, but I'm wondering, can we edit here? And you can see I'm double clicking, clicking, and no, it doesn't let me edit. I wonder though, is there a right click action that we can do? So let's right click and oh, look at that. We have a PTF recorder context menu. So what's inside there? Add action. Okay, verify, good to know. Those would be your things that are usually across the top of the PTF recorder. What about this insert step? Add log. Oh, I like that. Can we insert a log through the editor or the recorder listing? 
No, we can't. Okay, well, good to know, but let's keep that right click context menu in mind because that might be the secret to inserting steps while we're recording. Okay, so let's continue with our test. So after installing PTF, we run a simple test to confirm the installation. Basically, we navigate to user profiles and set a verification on the language code. And then we play back to make sure that the test plays back properly, that we have our Chrome drivers installed properly, etc. It's a simple test, but let's see how the new recorder responds. So first I'm going to navigate. So I'll click on the nav bar and then I'll click on the menu navigator. And you know, I'm, I have to say, I'm shocked at the responsiveness of using the Chrome recorder. When we're using the IE11 recorder, we encourage our students to mouse over an item before you click it, wait for the background color to change because we've noticed a delay when we're using the recorder. But I'm not seeing any delay here in Chrome, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and continue clicking through the navigation to get to user profile, so people tools. And you notice as soon as I click, I, I, I don't even wait to hover. I just go right to the item, people tools, security. I click, it shows up in the list, so it's recording. One of the challenges we had with the Internet Explorer version was sometimes we would click before waiting for the user interface to update and the PTF recorder would miss our click, which is why we taught students to pause over the item. But here in the Chrome recorder, just click, click, click all your way through. It seems to be a non-issue. Okay, so people tool security. The next thing I wanna to go to is user profiles. So let's scroll down the menu. Actually, actually, I'm at the bottom of the menu. I don't see user profiles. So I'm thinking, I'll bet it's behind the PTF recorder status bar. So let's see if we hover down there, if we move our mouse down there, what happens? Oh, that's perfect. It moves the status bar out of our way so we can see that item that's behind it. Well, that's fantastic. So I'll go ahead and click and then click again on user profiles. And you notice that the PTF recorder is recording every single one of my clicks. Now, actually, that concerns me. I mean, yes, I want it to record every single click, but I don't want it to record navigation in this manner. Unless I'm testing navigation, there's no point to record the clicks. What I want is log in, go to transaction. So the typical way we would see that in a PTF test is log in and then page.prompt would be the action to take us directly to the target. So let's see, user profile. And what I wanna see is, did it record a page.prompt? I don't see one here. That concerns me a bit. So maybe perhaps we still need to, maybe we're gonna to have to add that step in ourselves. Maybe the PTF recorder is not recognizing that this is navigation. See, the IE11 recorder would have noticed that's navigation and it would have recorded all the steps, marked them as an active. Well, let's keep going here. Let's see what happens. So let's look for A. Adams. A. Adams is a demo user in the Palm images. And I, you know, I just want to hit the enter key. Normally in IE11, what we would have done is type in the exact match, gone down to the search button and typed or clicked on the search button directly. But I just want to see what happens when we click the enter key. Oh, well, first thing is we see that PeopleSoft now recognizes that all the other steps above were for navigation. It disabled them. That's fantastic. And it put in the page prompt. That's great as well. But you know what I see missing? The page prompt OK. When you press the OK button there or the search button when you're on a search page, it's supposed to put in a page prompt OK to take you directly to go past search into the transaction. I don't see that. So if we were to play back this test right now as it's recorded, you know, do the, the verify people, the PTF recorder or the playback would be looking for the language code on the search page because we don't see an action here for moving away from the search page and into the transaction. So let's try that again because right now it appears as if the Chrome recorder is behaving exactly like IE11, which actually is good news. Consistency, that's great. So let's return to search and rather than A Adams, let's clear and then how about, let's try A Calder. And this time let's do it the way that we would have done it with the IE11 recorder and press the search button. So hover, I'll wait, I'll pause just a second, press the search button and fantastic. There we see the page prompt, okay. So the next step is to do the language code verify. That would be our typical prove our install test. And normally we would go up here to the drop down list, we would choose verify, then we grab the crosshairs and we drag the crosshairs over the language code. I don't see that in the new Chrome based PTF recorder, but I do remember we saw that right click context menu. So let's right click on the language code, choose PTF recorder, insert step, no, add action, verify. Okay, and it says recognition, this is the field, 
It is a combo box and this is the value language. Perfect. So now I'm curious about scroll handling. So let's do this. Let's switch to the roles tab where we have a grid and then we can test out some of that scroll handling using scroll keys, et cetera, like we would have with the IE 11 recorder. So let's see, let's pick one here. How about the approvals fluid row? And so I'm gonna right click, choose PTF recorder and add action, set scroll key. Okay, the scroll ID is one and then save. And then let's try to, let's do a PTF recorder on approvals fluid again, insert step, let's do scroll action. Let's do a select scroll ID of one. That was the ID that I used. Scroll ID of one, return value. Let's put this in row number. This would be our variable we're, cr we're creating in PTF. The action is going to be select, select the row that has approvals fluid, save. And there's an interesting thing that I see here, PTF recorder, use scroll variable. So I'm gonna select that, select which variable, the row number variable, save, and then let's do a verify. PTF recorder, add action, verify. Verify that the text at, it says $6, doesn't it? See, that's one of the reasons that we use scroll handling because that is $6 right now, which really means row number seven. But will it be forever? I mean, can we play back this test later and still have this value show up at row seven? Maybe, uh, but we certainly shouldn't depend on that, which is why we have scroll handling in PTF. But I wanna see what happens because we use that scroll variable option. I wanna see how the PTF recorder treats that what we see in the PTF editor. So let's save this. Let's close the recorder. So we're gonna stop recording and then close and then return back to the PTF editor. And what do we see? We see the login, we can get rid of that. We see click, click, click through the nav bar. We can get rid of that as well because we're not using that for navigation. We, got a, we have a couple of additional options here for you know when I test, did some different testing, we can get rid of that. But we wanna keep the page prompt and the page prompt okay, as well as at least one of, probably the A Calder text set values. We see the text verify for English, that's fantastic. And then we see the scroll key set, return to row number, approvals fluid, approvals fluid. Oh, and look at that. I used row number here instead of $6. In the dialog that popped up, we saw $6 show up. But here we're seeing ampersand row number, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanna see. So I can see that I have a little bit of PTF editor cleanup here to do, but it's the same cleanup that I would have done with the IE 11 recorder as well. But what do you think of the new PTF recorder? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. So Internet Explorer 11 retires on June 15th. People Tools 85907 is the first People Tools release to support the Chrome recorder. So if you're a PTF user, you may want to plan your upgrade before June 15th. Now, according to the My Oracle Support document 2834568.1, PeopleTools will backport the Chrome recorder to PeopleTools 85818, but that's as far back as it goes. If you're an active PTF user, you'll want to consider migrating to a supported release before June 15th. So, with selective adoption, continuous delivery, drop zones, and event mapping, we believe PTF is more important than ever. Customization isolation solutions, such as event mapping and drop zones, don't show in compare reports. So we use PTF in our development cycle for regression testing. Now, when we create an event mapping solution, we record a PTF regression test to prove the solution works after each maintenance cycle. Are you ready to add PTF to your development workflow? Join one of our live virtual PTF sessions or purchase our on-demand recorded PTF course. Now at JSM Pros, we teach people tools and web development concepts like this every week. Be sure to check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea, subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a course. Or do you have a team that wants to learn more? Give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now, before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future soundbite? If so, let us know by sharing your idea at soundbites.jsmpros.com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.